Hello, and welcome to Recruiting and Hospitality from Cato.com. I am Junior Lewis, and in, in each program, we invite top names from the world of hospitality to discuss matters affecting employers such as yourselves. So recruitment, attraction, retention, and development, as well as anything else affecting you and your teams. Cato.com recently conducted research across 500 hospitality employers and 750 UK hospitality employees to gain insights into their experiences, challenges and viewpoints. We are pleased to announce our findings on the latest release out now. We know that as an industry, the sector faces huge challenges with productivity, engagement and retention. And if not tackled head on, these will negatively impact hospitality businesses. Now, how are you tackling these within your businesses as, as, as a whole? And is there a strategy that is working? So I've, I'm honored to have a very special guest with me today, Gemma Tracy, HR Director at Chamney Spa Resort. Gemma, you've been in our world for many years and we've, your opinion means a lot to us and your, and your feedback. So it's such an honor to have you here with us. So Gemma is going to share insights and the great work she's doing at Chamney's, but just to give a flavor of what some great tips that she recommends uh, as we tackle these important topics. So Gemma, over to you. Um, so, first of all, introduce yourself to, to, to our audience and so tell us what you do at Chapneys and just an overall overview of Chapneys as a, as a business as well. Hi, Junior. Hi, everyone. And, you know, I, I'm sat here smiling because we have known each other for such a long time now, even though, you know, we just said earlier time passes so quickly. But, you know, here we are 20 years down the line, still the same, right. still talking about the same things yes. and still um, inept in some techn technological things. Yes. Um, so thank you so much for, for having me as part of the podcast. So I'm Gemma at HR, HR Director at Champneys. I've been here for just over two years and only ever worked in, in hospitality. And this business and, and Champneys for me, it's it's like hand and glove. It's just everything that I'm really passionate about, wellness, well-being, really tapping into a different side of the employee life cycle journey, things that I haven't been exposed to before. So, yeah, this is, you know, this is this is Shamley's and, and me, hand and glove. Wonderful. Well, I'm sure, no doubt, you're doing some great work at Shabney's. We're very lucky to have you. So, um, as we go into the main topic, so what to what extent do you feel that hiring the right person from the start impacts retention rates? Junior, to every extent. We live in such a fast-paced environment. If we don't make the, the right first impression, you're never going to get that second opportunity. And when you don't do that, of course, it allows for doubt and question to set in. Getting it right at the outset means for us sharing our brand story, explaining about where we are in the in the journey, what part the applicant fits into that puzzle, mm -hmm. and of course, what we're working towards we're not perfect and, and things don't always go to plan. They don't yes. often go to plan. Um, but we know when we've invested time in recruitment, in having the right conversations early on, mm -hmm. we know that when a challenge comes up, and it might be one week, four week, 12 week, any period in the, in the probation or a little bit later on, we know if we've made that solid foundation at talent attraction, at onboarding, we get a little bit of leeway and that's the most important thing to us. So that's why we put a lot of emphasis in, you know, driving retention, but through the first early stage. Right. And what measures have you put into place to ensure that you're hiring the right people from the very start? Training, training our hiring managers. And that's, you know, that's, that's ever evolving. We talk about different generations coming into the business all of the time. And that means our managers have to adapt. We have to look at how we, you know, engage, you know, technologically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm smiling just thinking at flashbacks of when we used to ring the job centre and when we used to put adverts in the paper, mm -hmm. you know, oh my gosh, not a th look at your raised eyebrows. They're not <laughs> really not a thing anymore. So how right. we keep adapting to that and how we deal with the pace that we're working at. But, you know, for us, we still use the job boards. We use everything that's mobile friendly. So, you know, we've we've got to do that. And if we don't get in touch quickly somebody else is going to snap that candidate up mm. that's that's the market that we're in mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, oh, 100% and and I really feel hiring the right person is really down to your your brand and your job adverts so as I said earlier I've worked in hospitality you know those 20 years caterers always been 
at my side, my go to board. And mm. I think it, it's fair to say people can fall in and out of love with a, a job board, but there they are. Um, recently, we recruited a general manager through Caterer. So, oh, you nice. know, every level, ev- every level, you know, we can recruit through that job board. So, I guess, and another uh, why I have so much <clears throat> allegiance to, to Caterer is that. Actually, if you're on that website, you're looking in the industry, you've gone Mm -hmm. to the go-to board, or you're coming from that experience. So it's a win-win for us. Mm -hmm. I I had a call recently, actually, with with Jay at Caterer, when we were talking around applicants, the market that we're in, and she said, recruiters, uh, well, recruiters are telling us that job seekers spend no more than six seconds reading a job advert what um as a as a as a health brand you know we really enjoy a slower pace we want our potential Mm. recruits to see the great things that we have to offer see what the role is Mm. and then really make an informed decision six seconds you're not making that informed decision you're perhaps not looking for your next career move and that's kind of what we're looking for always because we want to develop people as much as we Mm. can Mm -hmm. and i'm really conscious of <clears throat> the whole employee life cycle so of course that includes separation but when people leave us I want them to have that long lasting memory this is what Shant has afforded them to do in their career yeah. mm-hmm. this was the stepping stone that got them to what they what they wanted or it helped them earn money to save for a house deposit to save to go on a dream holiday mm-hmm. whatever it might be mm-hmm. but I think that warrants more than six seconds and those people who leave you with a great story, they they go on to become some of your biggest ambassadors because they've had a great experience and on their way out, they can shout, or while they're even still there, they can shout out about why they stay and just truly how much of a great employer you are. Engagement is also a hot topic at the moment. So keen to get your thoughts on this. First of all, what do you consider to be your greatest drivers for engagement across your teams? This is basic. It's communication and transparency. We're a family-run business and really proudly so. And I think because we say that, we seem to have a much deeper connection with each other. We have a bond of trust, I guess maybe only a family can achieve. And I, and I say that, you know, I think about how our parents maybe speak to us and when we get yeah. told off and, you know, we do get told off and we're told terrible things or we're called out on our actions. But at the end of the day, there is that underlying love for each other mm-hmm. because you're a family. And mm-hmm. and really, I, I think that's what I mean by a deeper connection. Right. We connect differently. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we have that bond of trust and it means that we can be vulnerable. We can say when things haven't gone our way or we as employers can say when we've got things wrong. And, you know, that that happens all the time. We are fast-paced. We yeah exactly you know own it and Mm. I really think that drives trust of course but it does drive engagement because we can all be honest with each other and actually Mm -hmm. we can go on a better journey together because we've talked about it yeah and have you found that stronger engagement drives greater productivity how do you link the two 100% it does if you believe in what you're doing and the team believe in you and you believe in what you're doing it for you're going to go and do it well Mm -hmm. and that's that starts from onboarding it starts about telling your story how people fit into that puzzle you're then going to go and do it of course and you're going to do it well We're, we're really fortunate that I guess I'm going to say a slower pace, but I might be doing us us an injustice because we are we are fast paced. You know, we're not all just smelling the massage oil and and calming (laughs) down. You know, we we run really busy businesses, but our teams get instant job satisfaction, not just from the the teams around them when everything's going well. Of course, it's a happy environment, but they get it from our guests. Mm. So. Uh, it could be through our, our spa team. So through their healing hands, when a client walks out of their room, it's like night and day, the difference between them. And, and our therapists get that feedback instantly. Mm-hmm. And it spurs you on to go and do that again. Mm-hmm. Our well-being and fitness instructors, you know, they curate and lead boot camps, classes. Mm-hmm. 
And there you're seeing somebody, you're seeing a, a client, a guest, a member that is putting themselves through their paces. Mm -hmm. They achieve something that they didn't think was possible. Mm -hmm. They might have lifted a weight that they've never lifted before, done a routine they've never done before. Yeah they get instant satisfaction mm -hmm. bang they're ready to go and do that again and even even our, our chef so in our in our health resorts it's balanced and nutritious meals a low calorie meal doesn't mean a boring meal it means colorful different something mm -hmm. that is going to give you high levels of energy so and our chefs see that through the guests walking around with how engaged they are with us and it's just a really lovely cycle that you mm -hmm. get that instant satisfaction mm -hmm. and that is that that drives productivity. Right. Sometimes you can play, you know, lip service to a lot of things and colleagues might seem insincere, but when your guests are telling you that, that's yeah. a, that's a winner. Yeah. Sounds sounds like a sounds wonderful. And it sounds like you're doing not just uh, from a employee experience you're doing some really great work with giving custom consumers a great experience as well very very great business you've got there so so great to hear that what is what are your three top tips for employers to increase engagement what would you say Simon Sinek says this so concisely and there's a really great video on, on his on his TED talks know your why know why you're doing what you're doing it's really yeah. easy to say what you're doing mm -hmm. we deliver spa treatments we deliver a, a a balanced meal but why do we do that if your colleagues know why you're doing what you're doing you're you're in you're engaged you're you're productive because you believe in it mm -hmm. if you don't believe in it we're not the we're not the property or the group for you mm -hmm. there's, there's something that that's more suited to you um, number two, I think be true and own it. If own it, if you haven't, if something's not going your way, or you've we've put out an initiative and it and it hasn't worked, just own it. It didn't mm -hmm. work, but this is why we did it. This is mm -hmm. what we wanted to achieve, but we didn't. Come and come and help us along that way. Um, and and don't have one person or one team responsible for engagement. It is actually a mindset and requires everybody one way or another. You can't have, and this is the whole lip service thing. If you have one team, people and culture team, mm -hmm. a HR director trying to lead engagement, one person is not going to yeah. do that. Yeah. So, you know, engage everybody, get their mm -hmm. feedback. I talked earlier about the different generations in the business. You have to go and speak to everyone, get a working mm -hmm. group together, understand mm -hmm. what floats everybody's boat. And we say, you know, it isn't always financially driven. OK, well, what is it? Is it the thank you? Is it a reward trip? Mm -hmm. You know, you tell us and we will facilitate it. And yeah. that's how you get the best engagement. I always talk about as well, like people feel, thank you for that. People want to feel a sense of belonging. And through great engagement, they feel like they belong. And I think that's sometimes where we we lose people because they've gone into environments where they don't feel a sense of belonging and 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 engage engaging with them. So I think that's such a powerful, you know um, topic. And in terms of productivity, what initiatives have you put in place to drive greater productivity across your teams? So these are, you know, they're really basic again. Feedback and positive storytelling, you know, share that experience. And it could be, I talked about the wellbeing and fitness instructors. It could be sharing it with a different resort. This class went really well. This walking group didn't like that walk, you know, whatever it, but, but feedback, share mm -hmm. it, share the good, share the bad. Mm -hmm. Training, you know, that, that can't ever lose sight through through covid we maintained our level of training and actually mm -hmm. coming out we really ramped it up mm -hmm. and and it's a hard decision to make you know because when you're you're looking at your profit and loss account you're looking at this expenditure you know that that classic tale of you know what if i yeah. train somebody and they leave yeah. Yeah. yeah what what if they stay we and hear actually, that a lot as well what if we do all that training and they leave you're right yeah, but you know, you tried. And if you've got the trust in your onboarding and your recruitment, then mm -hmm. they're worth the investment. So yeah. we've really ramped that up and, and we really believe in that. And actually, mm -hmm. 
Training's really evolved in, you know, we, that common phrase of death by PowerPoint. That really isn't yeah. a thing anymore because mm. it's it's open and it's engaging. It's talk, it's talk throughs, it's scenarios. Mm-hmm. And, you know, let's talk about our property. What does it, what does a plate look like? What does that journey look like? You can't mm-hmm. get that from a PowerPoint. So that's some of our, our top tips in, in training. We do profit sharing. So really proudly we don't say you know you're going to get a bonus if you do x y and z it's if if the if everything is going well our owners share it with us mm. so you know the, the 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 better we do the better we're all going to be right and and i think that the the best of all and and i say this with a really broad smile on my face is that yeah. we do we do reward experiences and this so this is a new thing for me because you know I've been in a, in an environment where that has been something that's been offered before and the owner said to me you know I could give you a thousand pounds I could give you three thousand pounds but would you remember it the trips that we've had and that we offer are lifelong lasting memories they afford you opportunities that you perhaps wouldn't have ever thought of or you mm-hmm. you may have dreamt of there's there's bucket list items that i've that i've ticked off three oh, wow. in fact in in two years it, it's can you incredible share? can you share some of those like ide- things that they're involved yeah so recently i went on safari in south africa oh oh wow you mean oh Fabulous. wow it, it's incredible <laughs> isn't it Wow. Um, I saw Elton John in concert. Didn't think that was ever going to happen for me. Oh, um, wow. For those that are listening, I'm not 80, but <laughs> it's just he's just a music icon yes. and something that I really wanted to do. And then other experiences are just where I've been in front of people and then the opportunities that that they've they've given to me. I've had my mind opened and mm-hmm. I really love and value that. Mm -hmm. I love to read I love to experience and I you know I'm in HR I love people so you know that's that's some of the experiences that I've been afforded that sounds fabulous and I didn't know that I almost want to come work for you now (laughs) that sounds wonderful everybody wants to work with us (laughs) good plug there I love that saw you did that (laughs) what are your top three top tips for improving employee productivity what would you say engage the relevant people have tough conversations when they're needed. So, you know, like I said earlier, call it out. If mm-hmm. something's not going right or it hasn't gone right, our default position is people didn't come in to do a bad job. Something mm-hmm. has gone wrong in their day. Let's understand it. Let's be open. Let's have that conversation. Yeah. And and three, debate and agree. Aren't we much better when we have a debate and we talk about it? It isn't, well, I've worked in the industry for 20 years, so I know. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. You know, let's let's talk to everybody. Let's understand. You know, you might have had 30 minutes to clean a bedroom, but the world's moved on. Things are different. So mm-hmm. do we need something else? So that's where I think, you know, debate and agree. And that's a good example in in housekeeping and bedrooms and how long mm-hmm. you have to clean and the equipment that you have now and you know we can say one way but this is this is good for our profit margin mm-hmm. and the colleague can say yeah but it's not good for anything else so let's debate it and then get to the the happy medium yeah great answer so we've looked at um, engagement and productivity the topic that i that again played affects the industry so much now is retention we hear a lot of you've know, spent all this time hiring and we've done onboarding and training like we said earlier and they're gone the first three months first 90 days they're gone how do we get them to stay and we constantly hear these young this young generation they don't want to work we hear a lot of that so tell me how first of all how do you tackle retention and what is it like in your business I'm um I'm I'm laughing and smiling with you. You know, one minute they're in, poof, next they're gone. Okay. Um but again, I think the idea of if you haven't worked in hospitality, the, the idea of going in can actually be quite romantic sometimes. Mm-hmm. The experiences that you have, 
perhaps that you've not visited a beautiful property, you've not been a, to a beautiful spa, and then you have an opportunity to work there. Mm -hmm. um, that romantic idea is very few and far between, but no, there's maybe <laughs> some out there. Um, but, you know, for us, I guess the the key challenges would be trying to deal with the, the constant threat of the unknown. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's a known unknown. And I think more than ever, we're faced with colleagues that are attempted and attracted by places that would never have appealed before mm -hmm. delivery driving, as an example. Mm -hmm. Coming out of COVID and I think lots in the industry, you know, thankfully were saved by furlough. But the the sense of earning on that perhaps four days or the 80 percent, mm -hmm. there was a shift in mindset. Mm -hmm. We recruit now and applicants will say, well, I don't work weekends or I don't want to work evenings. OK, well, we'll shut the doors on Saturday. You know, we, we can't do that. So how do we change it? Yes. How do we better educate? Mm -hmm. And And actually, you know, I just think sometimes bank holidays and Saturdays they're like the wild west in the real world come to work have a day off in in the week when it's a yeah. lot calmer so there's lots of educations that we can do but it is about and I guess it comes into retention if you think about us as a spa business we do mm -hmm. have to do some of those things on rotation another another key thing is you know, when we don't retain people is when we don't do what we said we were going to do. Mm -hmm. If we've broken trust, we have nothing. Mm -hmm. So that that's a real important factor for us. Um, I think not facilitating the environment where colleagues can speak openly. That is the world that we are in. And if we don't mm -hmm. facilitate that, I, th I suppose from, from years ago, we talked about this open door policy. You've got to mean it. Yeah. Your your ears have got to be open 100% of the time because that is that is the world of work now. It, it You know, every industry, this isn't just hospitality, everybody is, is wanting that. And, and finally, I guess not keeping up to date. So this could be environmental, generational, or of course, you know, current practices. Talked about housekeeping as, as an example. The, the environmental example I'm talking about, um, in a in a different business that I was in, we went to a recruitment fair and the colleague that I was with at the time explained that somebody came over to them, picked up the, we had a beautiful little jar of jelly beans. They picked it up, tapped it and it was glass. And he said, I can speak to you now. And we said, that's interesting. You know, why wouldn't you have spoken? And then he was talking about plastics. So you've got to keep up to date with everything and you've mm -hmm. got to believe in what you're saying. You know, we said that earlier, mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. believe in, in, in your why. And also you mentioned it, know your bigger role. Where do we fit in? And that's the environmental piece. Mm -hmm. um, and then the generational piece, you know, we talked about newspapers and those old hat ways of advertising. There's something mm -hmm. changing all of the time. So, mm -hmm. you know, really to try and keep up to date as best you can. Yeah, but you know, yeah. lean on lean on you guys. Yeah. You guys tell us tell us everything. And on that note, uh, the, the, the the Hospitality Insider, which is just released, um, we the research that we conducted, the top reasons for leaving an employer and looking for another role, and the answers are lack. Twenty four percent of our respondents said lack of competitive salary. So this is the basic research that we just completed. The other 23% quoted mentioned lack of work-life balance. 19% mentioned lack of flexibility. And 19% mentioned lack of progress, progression opportunities. So those four things, competitive salary, flexible working, uh, work-life balance, and progression opportunities. How do you present those and package those up? And how do you tackle that that those four things when people talk about Because they're the common threat themes while what people leave. So a lot of those are debate and agree. Yeah. Training and development, that's something that we're really passionate about. So we have 70 apprentices in a in a in a mix of 1100 colleagues. So wow. our, our programs are, you know, the, the best that there are out there. And that's something that we're really passionate about training. Mm -hmm. I talked about that whole investment. Mm -hmm. I am confident that, you know, that a tick box for us mm -hmm. competitive salaries that comes into the dealing with the unknown you mm -hmm. 
you are faced with colleagues that are tempted by somebody leaving your industry mm-hmm. and you know I know you'll have it in front of you we could be talking about 10 pence the difference of that that being a deal breaker Correct. so if you believe in the why the why of what you're doing if you can take that those benefits that we have to offer would make up to x amount does that make us more competitive but you know it is such a tough one to answer because we can't keep increasing pay rates mm-hmm. if we drive productivity we can mm-hmm. of course if we increase customer rates we can but is that the right thing to do you know we're a business that, that focuses on experiences that goes for our guests as well mm-hmm. our colleagues have a good experience our, our guests need to have a good experience so it needs to be affordable achievable um but it, but it is tough. It's, mm-hmm. you know, how do you compete? You can compete by having an open and honest conversation, debate it. Okay, mm-hmm. you come to me with that. Here's where we are. Let's work out what that middle ground is. And on flexibility, you know, again, after after COVID, four-day weeks, the, the whole trial that's been going on, mm-hmm. work four mm-hmm. days, get five days pay we're really open to those discussions right and like i said earlier this isn't one team and one person for us we're looking at it by department by department mm-hmm. let's start in the kitchen so do those shift patterns work do you get the right the right mix you know can a breakfast chef work breakfast lunch and dinner because that would be the shift pattern or do we mix something up and it is the team sitting down saying mm-hmm. right okay here's our hours of operation Here's our menu mix. This is what we're doing. How do we do it? How do we do it differently? How do we do it in four days, three days, eight hours, five hours, whatever it might be? And with the laws changing on, you know, the day one right of of working flexibly, it just opens up debate. So let's be ahead of that curve. Let's have all of those debates now. So when we're faced with an interview, Ta-da, here are all our options. This is what yeah. we thought of. This is this is what we can do. And equally, this is what we can't do. Yeah. We're a 24-7 business. Some things we can't do, but we're 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 all ears. Mm-hmm. And again, it comes back to being transparent and open up from the very start. Also, I see a lot of um, companies, um, you know, we, they've got some really good benefits, but monetizing benefits is something that I don't see a lot of. So, for example, there could be free parking, you know, not so much in London, but some of the hotel groups and, and sites will offer their staffing free parking. And if, when you look at the value of that, it could be up to £3,000 a year. So we may not win on the salary piece all the time, but some of the benefits you offer, f- ex- reward experiences, for example, it's a fantastic holiday away to South Africa or wherever it, it could be that costs thousands. You know, it says, mm-hmm. how do we monetize the experience in, in, ways, in areas where we can? And so, so that could be one of the ways in which we could tackle that as well, because you can't go increasing salary as you feel as, as you feel fit. It's just not you're running a business here. But I think that's how we can go tackle that sort of thing. I'm not sure if you do any of that where you might you look at your benefits and say, what can we monetize? You know, what we could put a monetary value on. Is there anything that you sort of offer that you put a monetary value on? No, probably not that we that we do really well. And I think I think free parking in in hospitality it, it's an absolute given. I get what you're saying about about Lond- our London properties, of course. But you know, that's that's for us. I mean, you know, it'd appear l- lower down because that's you know that should be just part and parcel, like mm-hmm. with uniform, like with meals on duty, mm-hmm. like with tea for for those that work back of house departments. Yeah, you know, those that work front of house. You know, they get beautiful coffees, of course. But things like gym membership, things like money off products. So fifty mm-hmm. percent off Chamonix products. You can only quantify that when you've got a colleague that is engaged in your brand Absolutely. that wants to buy those gifts and. My house is full of Champney's gifts because I get them, you know, yeah. and I build up my Christmas boxes, my birthday boxes. Yeah. You know, I could I could put a monetary value on it and I, and I laugh all the time. I spend half my wages in the Champney shop. <laughs> so for me, I can do that. But you've got to, I can only put a monetary value on a gym membership. You mm-hmm. know, that could, in a, in a high-end gym such as ours, you could be saving £120 a month. So that, 
simple things like that we could and do. that does help and the cost of living crisis that makes a massive impact yeah and, and it plays into to work-life balance you know we could offer a gym discounted gym membership but have they got the time to use it and this is this is all to Absolutely. do with your brand induction mm -hmm. it's only a benefit if you use it if you Love go that. and have a stay away if you go and have a treatment 50 percent off our treatments amazing yeah um I'm always scouting around for for appointment slots. You know, when can I when can I take half a day's holiday and go and have some treatments? <laughs> so, yeah, I, you can monetize it if, and it might be a really lovely project to do. Actually, you know, you've been here six months. What's the value of our benefits to you? Have you yeah. used any? If not, why not? And yeah. as part of our induction, we have some of the products out. So we have a beautiful couple of ranges: Awake and Calm and Slumber. And we get them out, touch them, smell them, engage yeah. with them, talk about the packaging, talk about our flip flops, touch our robes. So, you know, from day one, we're talking about really engaging appeal to the senses. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that that's, of course, what we do. If we can Sounds engage wonderful. that, we can we can maybe monetize some of it. Question, uh, a very important question here. What are what are the key signs that a team member a team member may be considering leaving their role, and what you, what do you feel leaders can do to turn this around? So we all split here. Some will do it silently. Mm -hmm. some, some will come right out and tell you. And I've I've been professing on that you know we're open, we're honest, debate, agree. So we like it if we're told and. I guess in our industry, we say if a guest has come forward, we see it as an opportunity. We've had an opportunity to fix something. Mm -hmm. And we also say, you know, a guest will return if we deliver what we said we were going to do. They called us out on something. We corrected it. They come back. They have a great time. So that's the same with colleagues. If they're honest to say, you know, look, you told me this at day one, mm -hmm. it hasn't happened, or I have a relationship breakdown, this isn't going well for me, then we really have an opportunity to fix it. Right. I said earlier, it's about trust. If they trust us and believe in what we say, chances are we can we can turn that around. But equally, we don't want to stop anybody on their onward journey. That's That's really important to us too. Mm -hmm. how you could spot it general disengagement i mentioned earlier people don't come in to do a bad job if you see that level of disengagement or you see somebody that isn't the same you know they're not they're not themselves mm -hmm. call it out how are you i noticed that that you're different today how was your day there's loads of ways that you can do that mm -hmm. just to open up the conversation right and and really, leaders can only ever turn something around if if there is that level of trust. If somebody comes to me and they say X, Y and Z is wrong, I'll say, well, I'm going to do A, B and C. If I haven't done A, B and C before, there's no level of trust. I've got nothing to base that on. But if right. I have, they might think, you know, I went to Gemma before and and actually that that solved that or we mediated or we got to an outcome that was good for for all of us mm -hmm. so a lot of trust a lot of open transparency but also you know facilitating another move if if that is where somebody wants to go mm -hmm. people outgrow their roles we know that yeah great great response and final question what do you consider to be the greatest benefits from achieving higher retention rates across your teams engaged teams better guest satisfaction increased revenue profits just smiles but you know you you said it sounds like a great place i like that or you know we talked off air about some of the things that we do that is that's a really good retention because i believe in what we do mm -hmm. so i talk i talk through you know smiles a classic thing of hospitality from yesteryear you know pick up the phone in three rings and smile they know you're smiling mm -hmm. they, they they do so if if you if that is your day eight hours 10 hours 12 hours and realistic 15 hours sometimes if you are smiling and you have that belief through each other you can support each other through dark times and the dark times aren't always there so that makes the good times really good mm -hmm. and 
it's a it's a roller coaster, isn't it? So if we work on that retention and that belief, then they're the things that we're seeing. You know, stable teams, but you know, revenue and profits do do come into that. That that's important. As I said earlier, family run business, they will invest that money back into us might be an experience it might be some training it might be some new equipment uh, so it's a really lovely cycle you know engaged mm -hmm. productive team equals mm -hmm. money in your back pocket and experience Absolutely. latest equipment sounds great well what 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 a great discussion around key areas there you have it guests we've talked about engagement productivity and retention and an expert on these subjects was doing some incredible work at Shapneys, one of the uk's leading hospitality employers we love what you do and it's really good to have you come come on board and share with us thank you for sharing some success stories in cater.com we want that to continue and help you hire far more general managers not just that one that you've told us but lots more so keep us posted on the higher stories but 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 it's certainly a massive topic uh, at the moment retention it's plague it's plague in the industry and i think we need to tackle that head on so thanks for sharing your top tips and 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 a happy like you say a happy engaged workforce really drives more productivity and with productivity comes you know better business outcome so i think we need to focus on those and not just on the boardrooms like you said i think retention and engagement is everybody's business hiring board or hiring managers and their entire business community in making sure that these three key areas are well looked after so thank you for joining us, Gemma. Um, the, the Hospitality Insider is out now. It includes a full view of hospitality hiring trends across Q1 2023, including job postings, candidate activity, role types and regions. Just go to www.catra.com forward slash hospitality hiring insider. That's www.catra.com forward slash hospitality hiring insiders um, insider. Um, follow us on social channels, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at cater.com. Gemma, it's been an absolute pleasure. We, I am so intrigued about those reward um, trips away. I, I need to check that out. But it's great to have you on board today. And thanks for sharing. It's been a pleasure. Junior, thank you so much. It was a, it was a real pleasure and, and highlight for me to be invited. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Thanks, Gemma. Thank you. And Cheers. you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye now.